Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! It's a highly debated question about how you define fascism. And there's a lot kind of at stake here because when we label a movement as a fascist movement, it means that we, from the very beginning, aren't going to engage with it intellectually. We're not going to engage with its arguments. And furthermore, it's acceptable to use violence to suppress the movement. For decades, the left has really defined fascism as how the state responds to capitalism in crisis. The capitalist system, when there's a crisis, use right-wing or fascism to fight the social and left-wing movement. Fascism um, is an ideology that's uh, inherently reactionary and authoritarian. As uh, anarchists and communists, we consider fascism as counter-revolution, the exact opposite of what we are fighting for. It's a political movement uh, which seeks to destroy its, its political opponents through force and therefore we must resist it by any means necessary. Fascism I would define as a authoritarian, reactionary, nationalist movement rooted in an idea that there is a conspiracy against the white man, there's a conspiracy against Western civilization, there is a need for a street movement aimed at their political enemies, so the left and minorities and and social groups seeking liberation. People basically fighting back, whether it's the working class as a whole, groups that are oppressed under white supremacy, women trying to fight back against patriarchy. These are seen as the extreme social ills that their movement has to face and defeat in order for them to get to where they want to go. Contemporarily, it seems like pretty much everything is considered fascism, depending on who it is you ask. The left and the right both characterize each other as fascist, which is interesting many kinds of fascism, just like there are different kinds of socialism, anarchism, or communism, but they all share, you know, similar qualities of being extremely authoritarian, nationalistic, and ultimately based on preserving hierarchies of class, race, and gender. A 14-year-old girl in Rockville, Maryland was raped in a high school bathroom by two men allegedly in this country illegally. The way in which migrants are kind of being scapegoated by mainstream media, by the government, by the ruling class essentially. And fascists, they see an opportunity in this and also push those agendas, um, push forward like that kind of racist anti-migrant uh, rhetoric in order to fuel their political agenda, which is to destroy any working class resistance and any left wing organizing. I think there's a real mistake to see fascism as a list of principles that could be applied to any kind of political movement in any kind of country in any time period. It, it's an actual real living political movement. I think part of the problem is with asking is something fascist or are we in fascism is is this the worst thing that could possibly exist and I think that that is a conceit is really ham-fisted especially for North Americans. Arguably the United States wouldn't have had a worse history and Canada wouldn't have had a worse history if overt fascists were at the helm. I just like I, I fail to see it and I think it it negates the horror of North America by claiming that it could have somehow been worse. In Canada and in the United States, the basis of these countries are racist. It was forged through the mass genocide of its indigenous people and through slavery, which has like built what we know today as America. I think the actual functions of white supremacy, patriarchy, authoritarianism, settler colonialism within North America should be understood more deeply as it actually exists and not in comparison with other places. Hardline fascist movements are fairly similar in the United States and in Europe. The main difference is the concept of identity that the fascist movements are standing up for. In the United States, our identities are mostly defined by the category of race. We're a settler nation. People were brought here against their will of, of various racial groups. And white supremacy is a way to break that possible class solidarity against the people that own and control the society. In Europe, this notion of race doesn't exist in the same way. And so the, the fascists and the other far-right ethno-nationalist movements tend to define themselves tightly around their country of origin. If you look at arguably how the Irish were internalized into the American nation after the end of slavery, you can see how uh, the roots of whiteness are very different than, say, somewhere in like Italy, where you have now the Northern League who argues that, you know, only the North are proper Italians and are white, and the South of Italy are not white. Um, that distinction wouldn't be made in America. So in Europe, fascist parties have always looked for a racialized understanding of 
class politics. Okay? They reject, you know, communist or anarchist uh, critique of class society. Instead, they place that with the racialized ruling class, which is always the Jews or maybe thinly veiled anti-Semitism like the globalists. Fascist groups in America make that enemy into the immigrant, into the Black Lives Matter activists, into the refugee. Not the people that actually own and control society or the people that are basically turning the gears like landlords, politicians, police officers, you know, people in control of the prison industry. And that's really what fascism in the U.S. has always tried to do. You know, it's always tried to make enemies out of people below white workers. And as we can see with Trump, I mean, that sells.